Welcome to the HJ Talks About Abuse podcast, the podcast where we talk about sexual abuse cases in the hope that it will assist listeners in openly discussing topics which have been ignored for too long. This podcast is brought to you by the abuse team at Hugh James. We are lawyers, so we tend to speak about the legal aspects of abuse cases, but we aren't too shy to speak up about the broader issues faced by survivors of sexual abuse too. We hope that you find it interesting, but more than that, if you are a survivor of sexual abuse, we hope that you find our discussion empowering. Hello, podcast listeners. This is Dania out from Hugh James. And today on HJ Talks About Abuse, I am joined by my colleagues, Kathleen and Hannah. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, Hi Hannah. Hi, so today we are going to be talking about headline, I'm tired of this, the campaign to stop sexual abuse and harassment of women exercising in public. But before we start, just want to give a trigger warning and say if this is going to cause you any upset or harm, please do turn off now and join us for a later podcast. But if you are still with us, thank you for staying. And Hannah, can you give us an overview of what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, so thanks, Danny. I'm Tired of This is a new campaign that West Midlands Police have recently produced. So it's, um, I think there's a there's a video that's been made as part of it, sort of like an advertisement with acting in it. But basically, it's been launched to call for an end to sexual abuse and harassment of women and girls exercising in public. It's basically been a survey has been carried out by West Midlands Police in the region, and it found that 13 percent of females and 4 percent of males in that particular area of the UK said that they have personally experienced sexual abuse or violence, specifically whilst they've been exercising in public spaces. So this is clearly a big problem in this area and and to be honest, probably across the whole of the UK. So West Midlands Police are taking a stand and they want to deter this from happening in the future and basically putting out a clear message to say that this won't be tolerated and this needs to be changed. So you've pulled out actually, there's lots of statistics on this and it's not surprising is it is where the abuse is happening in the age ranges. So the age ranges that were looked at were 24% of 18 to 24-year-olds and 29% of 25 to 34-year-olds. And again, whenever we look at statistics, we have to think that perhaps some age generations won't have uh, complied with this or wanted to join in on the survey. So they don't necessarily need to be true reflections. But this is really high numbers, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the research has actually shown that younger generations are more likely to fall victim to this or have, you know, personally experienced or witnessed sexual abuse or violence whilst exercising in public spaces. So as you said, 24% of 18 to 24 year olds and 29% of 25 to 34 year olds. Have, have seen or been victim to this in the West Midlands area. Yeah, those statistics are truly shocking. And you can see where, you know, if you had experienced or witnessed sexual abuse or violence in a public setting while you're exercising, that it would make you certainly not want to go out and exercise in a public space. And I think it's important to remember what we're talking about in terms of exercising. You could be somebody who's just, you know, going for a jog and, and either witness or experience sexual abuse or violence yourself. So, you know, to me, it kind of, makes me think about the Sarah Everard case and Wayne Cousins and just kind of the safety of women generally and where can women actually feel safe and and that they can't even feel safe exercising in public. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think the message here is that women and girls should not have to be, you know, they shouldn't have to avoid exercising in public or going to certain areas. As you said, Kathleen, it's like, well, you know, where does this stop? Like, why can women not do this? This is a you know perfectly normal activity. Why is it women and girls? Why why do men not get the same you know anxiety or fear? It's it's just not acceptable. The thing that we also need to consider as well is that you know people are exercising outside and alone because with the cost of living crisis, gym membership is ridiculously expensive, especially in certain areas, populated areas like somewhere like London. People not necessarily can afford a gym membership, and things like COVID did push us all out to use outside spaces more for exercise. And actually, lots of people did take up walking and running and things like that. So, you know, I generally would think that people are exercising outside a lot more due to all of those circumstances. So the last thing that people want is this 
you know, not to be freely available to them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, too, you know, following on from your point, Danny, about COVID, I mean, we're in a cost of living crisis right now. And so, you know, one of the things that might be the first that you cut from your budget is is a gym membership, but you want to continue to exercise. So, you know, you would do that in a public space when you'd find a means of doing it. Maybe you would cycle, maybe you would, you know, run, maybe you would just do a workout on your own in, in a park if, you know, you didn't have an outdoor space, your own personal outdoor space. So it's really concerning to me that the numbers are are so big and also makes me wonder what the numbers look like in other areas in the country. I mean, this is just a campaign that's being run by West Midlands police, yeah. presumably because they saw a need for it. But I, I would assume, and I think I could safely assume that the statistics would be the same throughout the country. Yeah, if not higher. I mean, you know, we all know that you see so many people exercising in London. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I think London gyms are probably one of the most expensive. I imagine a lot more people do exercise outside there. But, you know, I, th- I think this is a bigger problem in respect of we all, you know, go go to gyms and things like that, is that actually within the gym, I think that there can be a culture and, and problems as well as outside exercising. I think it's a problem in this area in general yeah I completely agree Danny and I actually I I feel quite strongly that there is actually a you know this sort of culture in gyms too and I mean I don't know about you know you you both going to the gym I mean my gym has a women's section in it and I know a lot of other gyms do too and I know that these sections have been created so women feel comfortable exercising and I remember when I first came across one of these sections I was like quite taken aback that there actually had to be a you know a separate section and you know it was really commonly used so clearly a lot of women don't feel comfortable being in a gym setting with men and just to add to that you know you see things on TikTok and Instagram I know on TikTok there was a hashtag that was trending Um, I think it was something like gym weirdos and there was over like two million views and videos on there and for me you know being a TikTok user this is something that I see quite often is you know videos where girls have been filming themselves in the gym maybe for um like a fitness page and they catch men staring at them or being inappropriate in the background the thing is I I have a weird thing about phones and filming in the gym because I know that when I go and I'm working out in the gym and I'm probably looking a hot you know sweaty mess I really have concerns that other people are potentially filming not necessarily me but you have that fear that you're being vulnerable in your training and you're there to get fitter not to necessarily look good so that is one thing that I feel uncomfortable with but I know my own personal experience I have a male personal trainer and I will dress differently if I'm training with him and I will also use different equipment if I'm training with him because I find that say if I'm going to go and use weights by myself I will then more likely be approached or feel more uncomfortable that someone's going to come up to me and I would wear much baggier clothes if I'm on my own to deter someone coming up to me. I feel a lot less comfortable in the gym if I'm not training with my trainer. And I don't I don't know if, if that's just my experience, but I feel like, y- yeah, it's odd that, you know, not even consciously I do it, but I would wear much baggier clothing if I was training by myself. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking I've, the gym that I've joined recently, I when I came, went for the kind of induction and show around by the manager, and he, you know, showed me the weight section and he said to me, oh, well, if you come at this time of day, you know, the weights is all the kind of young guys and, you know, it's kind of taken over by the teenagers and guys in their 20s. So, you know, you might not want to come at that time of day. You might prefer to come at a different time of day, which, you know, I mean, at the time I just thought, you know, he was just being very straightforward about it. But yeah. actually looking at it in the context of what we're talking about today and and also, you know, as you say, Danny, your experience, and I can completely understand that, is actually this isn't right, is it? Why should we have to you know, yeah. dress in baggy clothes or, you know, make sure we go to the gym at a time where it's not all, you know, young guys taking over the weight section because we feel uncomfortable to go into the weight section or that there should have to be a women's only yeah. section of the gym. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's more of a cultural issue, isn't it really? Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. And I was just going to say, Kathleen, that just to add to that, it feels like it's almost been normalized. Mm. I mean, I know my gym that I go to, you know, it was almost like a joke between me and my friends that would go if we'd ever go together that we, we sometimes call it like it's, it's like a dating place because you go in there sometimes and you just feel like especially if you walk through the weight section I mean I wouldn't dare go to the weight section just because I do feel so intimidated and 
it's as you say it's like a cultural thing it's it's like it's become normalized and I think probably a lot of women feel the same way but until you know we actually raise the conversation and think about it it's not it's not right it's not right at all and it's not funny it's not a joke yeah absolutely and I think too from to that point and Hannah I mean you know it's great that this campaign is focused on public spaces but actually the campaign really needs to be wider doesn't it it needs to be focused on on women in gyms as well and how yeah. uncomfortable like I'm exactly the same when I used to work out with a personal trainer who was female I would only go to the gym if I was training with her because I would feel so intimidated and uncomfortable to go and even pick up weights to go and find another spot hiding away in a corner of the gym, (laughs) you know, on my own. And I think even just, you know, having to be aware of like what you're wearing, like I know times I'd be on the treadmill and obviously when you're exercising, you get a bit hot but I'd feel uncomfortable to like take a layer off. And, I, you know, I've seen visibly some girls who walk around, you know, which is completely right in their gym gear and, and little tops. And so they should because they're exercising and it's gym wear and just that attracting a lot of attention. And it's just so wrong, you know. The difficulty is as well, is that if you're in the gym, that there's quite a lot of well, especially my gym, there's quite a lot of mirrors. So in the areas where you're working out on the mats, you can see other people that are looking at you even though they can't see that you can see them and that is just such a weird situation that you know whatever you're doing it just it can feel very uncomfortable but yeah these should be open spaces and I mean we're talking about it from three female perspectives because we are female but it would be interesting as well to see if you know sometimes men feel like that you know if there's a big group of women in there watching you know if a man's gone in there on his own or other men how they feel I imagine it can be intimidating as well both ways really Um, no you are right yeah I'm I'm sure there is a lot of men I think that's a fair yeah I think there's that's a fair point of like if a man at a gym you know might be stared at or whatever but I think I do think generally speaking women have this experience not just in gyms or exercising or in public spaces I think women generally have often an experience of feeling out unsafe in various settings that men don't and and don't necessarily appreciate the kind of length that women have to go to to feel safe yeah and I mean we we've had cases before of sexual assaults in the gyms and the difficulties that necessarily come with it whether if we're talking about other gym users or perhaps instructors whether an instructor is self-employed and things like that so so the area of the gym world is quite a complex one but like anything we talk about, you know, the more people talk about it and raise awareness, I guess, the more likely there is to be be change and be policies. And there seems to be quite a lot of no nonsense policies in gyms because no gym wants the reputation of being, I don't know for a better word, a, a lecce gym because people just won't go to it. Yeah, I think that's true. But I think, you know, what, Hannah, you kind of found in your research was that a lot of this is women not reporting it. And so... There needs to be a culture change from that point of view and that women should come forward and report and feel comfortable to do so. But I think there's a couple of things that need to happen there. Women have to feel like they're going to be taken seriously and that you know, they don't blame themselves for a guy looking at them because, say, they're wearing a sports bra and some, you know, yeah. biking shorts to do their workout. And that, you know, that feeling of like, oh, well, I must have invited it because of what I'm wearing. But equally that when they report, it's going to be taken seriously and there is going to be some actual visible change at the gym and in, in the culture of, of the gym in order for people to to feel comfortable to come forward. Yeah, you, you're very right, because, you know, we all know that in these uncomfortable situations, you do question yourself and talk yourself. Women primarily talk themselves out of reporting. We know this in all areas. So, yeah, it's it's really needs to keep having the um, awareness raised on this. Yeah, I'd like to, as I said, I'd like to see campaigns like this, you know, throughout the country, actually. I mean, good on West Midlands for for doing this and raising awareness, but it'd be good to see this, you know, picked up by bigger media outlets and kind of start a... Well, even some of the gym brands, because there are a couple of very big gym brands that run all through the country, don't they? And so actually invoking their own policies for, you know, people to feel safe and comfortable would be a great idea. Yeah, definitely. And I think too, you just made me think of it when you were saying gym brands, I was thinking you meant like gym clothing, but gyms, like chains of gyms, but also actually I think gym clothing brands, like, you know, Gymshark and all these different ones that people are wearing under armor or whatever. It'd be amazing if they were doing campaigns around this, because I think that could have a huge impact, 
yeah. you know, just raising yeah, but- awareness and saying to everybody, like, you know, this is a space for everybody and everybody should feel comfortable and safe here. Yeah. And I think it would be nice to see gyms doing something other than just providing another space for women, you know, other than just segregating them. Like, really, that shouldn't have to happen. Um, yeah. I'm not saying it's the gym's fault, but it would be nice to maybe see them all unite and come up with different ways so yeah. that women do feel safe and they don't feel like they have to be moved to another room. It, I think yeah. that's ridiculous. They feel yeah. like they have to move to a private room so they can, you know, go on the mats and, you know, do different exercises like that. I just think, you know, something else should be done and it would be it would be good to see some new ideas and um, campaigns. It would be interesting to see how this develops going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I hope, I hope you know, people listening to this get in touch with us because I'd love to hear their experiences and see if we can kind of turn this into a bit of a, a campaign and, you know, get bigger... Yeah brands and gyms and you know gym clothing brands to get on board with this I'm sure a lot of people feel the same I I mean I know a lot of you know friends and family members who will you know actively avoid the gym or feel scared to go to the gym for these Mm -hmm. reasons so I'm sure a lot of people do feel the same and it's great that we've started the conversation about this it's very much so I I speak I've spoken obviously my my personal trainer knows what, what I do for a job and so just generally we chit chat about things like this and you know even he he was discussing with me the cultures in the gyms and how that's changed and how sometimes it it can be really problematic even for them that's their business at the end of the day and they need you you know their clients to come in and feel safe and comfortable so that that they're earning a living so it impacts a lot of people Mm, that's a good point yeah definitely because they have to be able to touch you right but you need to feel safe in that environment in order for them to be able to you know touch you to show you how to do a certain technique of lifting or movement or whatever yeah and we were talking about that because my trainer trained me probably 10 years ago and um I I went back probably what a year year and a half ago and he trains me in a different way now so you know if you're lifting weights you need to be able to engage that particular muscle and someone's verbally and telling you I don't know what you're saying just show me he's like oh can I just touch you there I'm like of of course you know but it's a it's very mindful that obviously PTs are training in a different way now completely and very professionally. But I think for them, you know, if there's a culture of, you know, women or or certain people not wanting to train in the gym, that is their livelihood because ultimately the people are that are looking for a PT are, is someone primarily like me who probably wasn't confident enough to go into a gym and lift weights by myself. I wanted someone to show me and teach me and be there with me when I do it. And if you're too worried about going into the gym because of all the culture and all the things we've talked about in there, so then they're not going to get the business either. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, thank you, Hannah, for raising this one as a topic. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, I'm really glad we've spoken about it. I think it's a really relevant issue by the sounds of it. And it's yeah, it's really great that we've raised awareness of this. Yeah, and as Kathleen said, if anyone's listening to this and um, wants to get in touch with us with their thoughts and feelings on it, then we would love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks both for um, joining me on this podcast. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, listeners. Thank you for listening to this episode of HJ Talks About Abuse. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast player. If you'd like to speak to us about something you've heard today, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at aboutabuse at hjtalks.co.uk.